can we not raise him raise her make them decent human beings realize a bit of the glory that is within is it necessary to make them remain like this worse than cattle all the time this kind of thought was the subject of meditation and while thinking of this tears pouring from his eyes with tremendous feeling a heart of a buddha you could see in samaji on that rock there he decided earlier during his travels in gujarat some people had put this idea into his head here nobody will appreciate you in this country you are one of the wandering sadhu that is all go to the west they will appreciate your intellect your wisdom your knowledge your experience that idea had been put into his head in the course of wandering up to kanyakumari that took root that took a specific form that there is a parliament of religions in chicago september 11 1893 you can be the representative of hinduism there but our people are so impractical we did not send him as a delegate you must have an association pass a resolution we send so and so as a delegate of hinduism to america we never did any such thing swami ji also never did any such thing he just we when ramarola writes beautifully he said he knew i have only to go to win i need not worry further that feeling was there holy mother also wrote a letter to him that all the show going on there is for you you go i bless you sharada devi a blessing ramakrishna also gave a vision to him at that time so madras young people gathered together arrangements were made finally he goes to america from bombay that is the second time coming to bombay maharaja khetri of rajasthan also helped him and so may 31st 1893 he left bombay for the west ostensibly to attend the parliament of religions but when he reached there first vancouver there railway from their railway to chicago he found parliament is still two months later sometime in september how to live here where is the money every day money flows out costly life there he was worried then something happened that something has happened many times in swami's life as if today when you look at it you feel as if some divine drama is taking place each person being given a part to play in the drama that you can see in many cases one such case is coming now he said somebody said go to boston it is cheaper to live there these two months so he said okay we shall go there he also learned that he is not a delegate so you cannot get admission to parliament that also he heard everything was chilling in a foreign country under the british rule we were there is no free government of india to help all alone only his intellect his spirituality his courage that alone was there to help him and the blessing of sri ramakrishna so he traveled by train to boston he was a professor in the train he was the professor of greek in harvard university professor right he took interest in him found a wonderful scholar so they talked all the way he said you be my guest in boston all the better i have no place to go so he became a guest there talks went on he was so impressed by samaji's brilliance broad views he asked him why don't you represent hinduism as the parliament of religions i do want to represent but they said i have no credentials i have no credentials samaji said then professor wright made a famous remark it is there in the life of vivekananda to ask you for your credentials 
It is like asking the sun it is right to shine. He did not merely say in words. He took pen and paper, wrote a letter recommending Swamiji to the Parliament of Religions Committee. In that letter you find one sentence. Here is a man more learned than all of the learned professors put together. That is the impression Swamiji created on Professor Wright. He and his wife remained Swamiji's friend up to the end of their life. So much. So later Swamiji started back to Chicago. Where to stay in Chicago? He doesn't know. So the train came too early in the morning, I mean in the evening, no place to go, where to spend the night. A box was lying there in the railway yard for goods. He entered that box and slept there, just like in India. Just imagine, a day later, he is going to, to what you call, electrify the whole world by his speech. But the previous day, he is absolutely a beggar, lying quietly, unknown, in a small box, railway box. So morning, got up, became very hungry, started begging here and there. Begging is not allowed in America. They insulted him, get out, get out from here, go, like that. Then comes again a second drama, divine drama. He sat on the roadside under a tree. One lady from across looked and found a strange type of person. She was attracted to go to him to ask him who is he. That was Mrs. George W. Hale, the Hale family, Swamiji's eternal friends, they remain thereafter. She came, are you a delegate to the Parliament of Religions? Yes, I have forgotten the way, I don't know anything. She took him into the house, gave a bath, dress, food, everything, and drove him to the Parliament of Religions where they had arrangement for the delegates to stay. This one lady and her husband and children, they became Swamiji's eternal friend. It is as if God has appointed them to play this part. Had yet appointed, you have the right to play that part. Many more such cases will come later on. Now comes the Parliament of Religions. The house in which he stayed, the granddaughter of that owner of the house has written her reminiscences of Vivekananda in her house. Most beautiful, very inspiring. She was a girl of five or six at that time. Some used to play with her and talk to her about India and all that. I also met her in Chicago. I heard her lecture, my reminiscences of Swamiji. There you get a wonderful picture of Swami Vivekananda. What impression he creates on anyone with whom he comes in contact. There is actually a book, Reminiscences of Vivekananda by Eastern and Western people. It is worth reading how greatness is so compelling. In spite of you, you are attracted. A college girl hears a Vivekananda who was in Chicago is coming to my town to speak. She became excited. Then she she, she, she will come to my college also to speak. Becomes more excited. No, he will stay next room became still more excited and she writes her reminiscences. I have forgotten what all he said, but his personality I can never forget. Such things you will get in that book. So now parliament started. It was meant to be a parliament of religions. Thousands of delegates from all over the world have come. Swamiji had no delegation, but Wright's letter got him the opportunity to be included as a delegate. Everybody sat, huge hall, and there 
parliament began first welcome to the delegates and the delegates reply to that welcome swami was asked from morning onwards by the president dr barrows you speak he has never spoken before he had once spoken in hyderabad just in february before going to america otherwise he was not a speaker then not now not now not now morning over afternoon came nearly 4 pm now or never then swami ji said okay i shall speak then he stood before the podium just looking around the whole audience with a prayer to god of saraswati in his heart he addressed the whole audience as sisters and brothers of america it was like a magic the whole audience started clapping 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 for 2 minutes they have never heard this kind of thing that they are all sisters and brothers he spoke from the heart he spoke from the heart of indian culture others only spoke of ladies and gentlemen the usual way after 2 minutes first he thought i have committed a blunder people have become excited then he understood he has entered into their hearts then for 5 minutes a brief speech reply to the welcome to the delegates that is the speech every child in india must memorize that speech just a para sisters and brothers of america it fills my heart with joy unspeakable to respond to the welcome that is given to us i come from a country which has taught the world tolerance and universal acceptance we have in our bosom all religions early christians parsis all who came as refugees india welcomed them that is the religion to which i belong i am representing that here then he quoted the gita shloka ye yatha maam prabadyante from through whatever paths men come unto me i receive them through those very paths and in the end he said there is so much persecution intolerance violence in the name of religion but i am hoping that the bell that tolled in honor of this convention this morning shall be the death knell of all such persecution in the name of religion let us hope so that is the first lecture that was enough he had captured the american mind and heart thereby because the best minds and hearts were in the audience and through newspaper reports glowing reports the rest of america also came to know this vivekananda was undoubtedly the greatest figure in the parliament of religions after hearing him we consider how foolish it is to send missionaries to this learned nation it is better they send missionaries to us than we to them one newspaper wrote like this all the papers were of this nature full of praise but the bigoted christian missionaries they never liked it they tried to blacken him all through throughout his four years life in america even later coming to india this blackening process continued today's christians are ashamed of it but at that time such fanaticism was there such narrowness was there india is only a land of heathens there is absolutely no culture that is how they taught the american people that hindu women throw their children to feed the crocodiles in the ganges such books are written for children's education in american schools you can see them in some of the recent books you will find so swami ji showed india in a new light this is the great country then he read a paper on hinduism another day he spoke on buddhism so many times he was called upon to speak and one particular even is when one speaker is speaking rather prosaic audience begins to leave 
then immediately the president will get up. At the end, Vivekananda will speak a few words and all will sit down. And the papers wrote, the chairman knew how to keep the best audience together by mentioning Vivekananda's name, that is all. So, from 11 September to 27 September, series of sessions, he spoke, all of them you get the complete work of Vivekananda, volume 1, the beginning itself, Chicago addresses one paper on Hinduism, the profoundest truth that he uttered there, which fell like a bombshell in the Christian world in America at the time, was quoting from Shvetashvatara Upanishad, addressing all humanity as children of immortality, not children of sin. It is a sin to call a man so. It is a standing libel on human nature. Call up the divine that is within. This is the way India presents the nature of the human being. In the West they are taught you are all born sinners. The only way is to believe that Jesus' blood will save you. That is the sum and substance of that religion. And this is the first time they were hearing this great message from the Upanishads that I am quoting that famous shloka Shrinvandu Vishve Amrutasya Putra Aye Dhamani Divyani Tastuhu Vedaha Metam Purusham Mahantam Aditya Varnam Tamasaparastat Tamev Viditva Adimurti Meti Nanya Pantha Vidyate Ayanaya Hear me ye children of immortality all over the world the message is not confined to India or to Hindu Vishwe, Srinvandu let the whole world listen I have a great message to convey to you even to the gods and angels in heaven let them also listen that is the first sentence where from you got this message? from books from here say no Vedahametam I have known it, I have realized it. Vedaha Metam. What is the truth? Purusham Mahanta. The infinite man behind the finite man. Physically we look finite, limited, truncated, but within us is an infinite dimension. The infinite Atman shines in every one of us. That is the great teaching of Vedanta. So Purusham Mahanta. Aditya Varnam. Luminous like the sun, Tamasat Parastat, beyond all darkness and delusion. And the Upanishad did not stop there. Believe me that you have the divine within, then you will be saved. Upanishad did not say. Try to realize it for yourself. Believing in somebody else is not going to save you. So Tameva Viditva, Atimurti Meti, Nanya Pantha Vidyate, Ayanaya. Realizing this truth hidden within you, then alone you can save yourself from death and delusion. There is no other way. There is no other way. Nanya Pantha. No other way. No other way. Realize this truth. Swamiji spoke this language. It was like a bombshell on that audience. The first Vedantic bombshell, I call it creating thinking. What is this? Today's science speaks of human uniqueness. Sir Julian Huxley, biologist, has written a book called Human Uniqueness, Uniqueness of Man. Man is unique in more ways than one, he has said there. At that time, it was not there. Man is a sinner, absolutely down and out. That's all. Only believe in a particular dogma, then you will be saved. The whole thing was turned upside down. Everybody wants to hear this message. America itself is a land of freedom. Americans believe in themselves. They don't believe they are sinners. Fortunately, they don't believe. Therefore, they could develop their nation. So, this message was carried all over America, rest of the world. Sometime later, it came to India also. This gave the opportunity to Swamiji 
to enter into the heart and mind of the American people. Invitations came from various towns and cities. Like Chicago, the second city in which a tremendous effort was made was Detroit, where these bigoted missionaries tried to spoil Swamiji's name, make people not to come, but thousands came. Not only so, the governor of Michigan gave a reception to Swamiji. All the distinguished people were there. And Detroit is also famous that it gave two devotees to Vedanta to Swamiji. One is Sister Christine, the other is the second one, well, close friends. Christine later on came to India, worked in Calcutta for women, etc., etc., as a later story. So that is the Swamiji's perception. Town after town, town after town, he went to deliver this message of Vedanta. Originally, he thought he could raise funds to work for India's uplift. Later on, he found that is no use. Let me give something to these people. They are hungry for it. They want to hear this wonderful message of Vedanta, so full of strength and fearlessness, faith in oneself. That's the teaching of Vedanta. We are all one. We are only physically separate. Spiritually, we are all one. So throughout America, these things went on. He visited England, the special invitation from there. So many lectures were delivered in England. And a second visit also to England, he went, returned back to America. In England, he got two precious human beings as upholders of Vedanta. One is Mr. and Mrs. Sevilla. He was captain of the army, retired. He was in search of truth. He attended Vivekananda's one lecture, crowded lecture. After the lecture, both of them came out. Each said, is this young man truly what he seems to be? The other said, yes. Then we must follow him. We must follow him. And literally they did. Swamiji wanted to start an ashrama in the Himalayas. Savior said, I shall do that for you. He sold away all his property, came to India. Today what you call Advaita Ashrama Mayavati is the product of work of these two great people, Mr. and Mrs. Savior. Savior passed away very early, before Swamiji passed away. Mrs. Savior lived much longer. So that is one. Second is, one young intellectual lady, Miss Margaret Noble, full of spirit, in search of truth, agnostic, not believing in this current religion that is not there. So he, she went to hear the lecture. She was so impressed. Second time she came to the lecture, she addressed Swamiji as Master, or my teacher. Suddenly, and from that time onwards, she became a daughter of Vivekananda. She has written a famous book later on when she came to India. Nivedita, sister, what you call Miss Margaret Noble, came to India, later on became Sister Nivedita. Swamiji initiated her. She started school, girls' school, etc. She helped Jayapindu Ghosh. She did so much political service to the people. And when she died, Tagore wrote an article in place of her that when Nivedita speaks of our India, there is more passion in it than when you and I speak of our India, a foreigner like Nivedita. She is the Loka Mata, the mother of the people. These are all Tagore's words on Sister Nivedita later on. So England gave these two, one couple and this lady, Swamiji, you want to work for Indian women? I am ready. I will come and educate Indian women. Swamiji was very satisfied. Yes, you are the type we need. 
a lioness. Our society cannot produce such women yet, but we want you now. So come and welcome. And so he came to India. A third contribution of England to Swamiji is memorable. When Swamiji was speaking in America after the Parliament of Religions, they were employing stenographers to take the lectures. Most of them could not take lectures properly. He was a fast speaker. They were in search for a good stenographer. A young English boy had come to America for a job to New York. J. J. Goodwin. He offered to do that service. As soon as he was given the job, he could run fast in stenography. As soon as he finished the work, they tried to pay him. Now I don't want any payment. Swami is doing so much work for the world, I will be his servant. From beginning to end, he remained Swamiji's servant, a student and servant. He passed away very early because later on, all the English and American lectures, all the Indian lectures about which I shall tell tomorrow, all this is taken by this J. J. Goodwin, one single young English boy, dedicated as it were for this cause. Later on, when he came to India, stayed in Madras for some time, came to Uti, and he passed away, 98 or 99, he was hardly 28 years old at the time. Swamiji said, my right hand is gone. That was the feeling he had. He had erected a memorial in Uti, where he is buried. It took some time to find out where he is buried. Being a poor man, no name is there. So he consulted all the church books and found Yes, J. J. Goodwin, St. Thomas Churchyard. So we took permission from the Archbishop, Calcutta, who was a friend of mine, then the Bishop of Coimbatore, and about three, four hundred people joined together. A beautiful memorial where his birth, his death, and Swamiji's poem on him, all that is written there. Anybody who goes to Uti can see it. When you go from the race course through the road, to the Maharaja Palace, Mysore Maharaja Palace, on the way, this falls. So this is the story. Now in America, Swamiji also published books on Vedanta, Jnana Yoga, Raja Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga. All these Jnana Yoga is mostly lectures, Karma Yoga is class talks and writing, Raja Yoga is dictation, and taken by Miss Waldo, Emerson's uh, granddaughter, you can say. So, so many people came together to help Swamiji in the work in America. In the midst of all this very busy schedule of work, he wrote a series of letters to India, to workers in this country, to inspire them to create a new India. Those letters are highly inspiring. Tomorrow I shall be telling that among the two books that every youth must read if he or she is to make life really meaningful, purposeful, and not empty, it is these two. Lectures from Colombo to Almora, that is lectures in India, and the other is letters of Vivekananda especially from 1893 onwards, up to 1893, ordinary letters. Inspiring letters come from 1893 onwards up to 1902, and he passed away. Now these are the two books that created patriots who joined to fight for freedom. Highly inspiring literature. But after independence, people forgot all about it. That's why we are down and down and down, not going up and up. Something is missing in India. That will come tomorrow. So this literature, for yogas, all these books, good sale, people want to read more, questions, answers going on. Swamiji did 
four years of work, the best part of his life in America and England. The best part of his life. He knew that the world is hungry for this great thought of India. Earlier, ancient Greeks had turned to India to learn our philosophy. On the Upanishads, so much went to Greece. One writer speaks of Plato being highly influenced by the Upanishads. So, there's an old tradition, Indian thought, going to the rest of the world silently, quietly, without any violence, without any army. India has never gone out to conquer any country during 5,000 years history. Swamiji repeated it again and again. India's contribution to the world is spirituality. It has, it has done it throughout the ages and in this age it is going to do in a big way and the Western people are asking for it. They are not thrusting it on them. This is the only message for which India doesn't spend a pie to spread around the world. The receivers pay for it. What must be the nature of that message? Just imagine, in any other religion to convert one person means 20,000 rupees to purchase his, his soul. But not so Vedanta. I have traveled 15 years around the world. All they paid for it. Not only that, they will pay some more as an offer of devotion. Because this is a profound philosophy. They understand it. It can no one can stand challenge of modern science. And so scientists also like this philosophy, that teaching of the infinite nature of man. In one single sentence, tat tomasi, tat tomasi. You are that, you are that. You are not this truncated physical frame. You are that infinite one. That is Chandogya Upanishad. How many scientists quote this wonderful line, tat tomasi, tat tomasi. You are that, you are that. Today, all over the world, South America, North America, and now the whole of Russia is simply mad to get a little bit of this literature, even a photo of Ramakrishna or Vivekananda, they are not able to get it easily. And most of the books are in English, a few in French, some few in German. Very old times they are published in Russian also. So now there is a real search. Swamiji, when he was in England, he met two great professors, Professor Max Muller, one who popularized Red Veda in the English translation. He wrote a book on Ramakrishna, first an article, Ramakrishna, a real Mahatma, second a book, Life and Sayings of Ramakrishna, from information gathered from Swamiji and others. That is. 99. Ramakrishna passed away 86. In 13 years, a life has come in London on Ramakrishna. The other is Doison, Professor Doison of Germany, great lover of India, Sanskrit scholar. He could lecture in Sanskrit. And that Doison has written a book, Vedanta Philosophy. He was in Bombay 1892 after his visit in India. A farewell meeting, he gave a farewell talk to the people of India. You have a great culture, you have a great philosophy, don't forget it, hold on to it, I request you. Then he said, the Bible teaches, love thy neighbor as thyself. But why should I do so? There is no answer in the Bible. Answer is in the Upanishads, because you and your neighbor are one. We are essentially one, the same Atman in every being. That is the teaching that is there. This is what Troison said at that time. Now here you have the wonderful impression made on a German professor and an English German professor in England. Max Muller is actually a German. And many in intellectuals and others as well. That was the time Swamiji felt after four years, I must go back to India. 
so many letters went to him. When I was returning, all the time in the West, we want you more here, we want you more here. And he used to reply. In one reply, you find a beautiful sentiment. It says, I am here among the people who love what I teach. I shall certainly come to India. I love India. But what is India, England or America to us? We who believe that you call man, but actually he is God in disguise. I serve him here or there. That's what I am doing here. Like that he wrote. Finally, he decided it is time to come to India. So 1897, January, he left England to come to India. And then the drama that took place in India at that time has been so beautifully described by Marshal Ramarola when he read about Vivekananda and Ramakrishna he was fascinated Tagore also met him at that time so when he found him interested in India Tagore told him if you want to understand India study Vivekananda in him everything is positive nothing is negative that inspired him that brought him to study the literature all in English he doesn't know English he didn't know his sister knew English sister will translate into French and then he wrote that book and the best critical appreciative books on Ramakrishna Vivekananda you get in these two volumes Life of Ramakrishna Life of Vivekananda that is the later development but Later on, one more book has come from Isherwood, the English writer in America. He has also written Ramakrishna, a great phenomenon. So Western writers are writing. Now many books are coming now. We are now concerned that this Vedanta, this Ramakrishna's message is meant for the whole world, not for India only. But India must be strong and steady to be able to deliver that message. How to reshape that India? That is the work Swamiji did on his return from his four years work in the West, landing at Colombo in January 1897. That subject we shall take up tomorrow. It is a fascinating subject, inspiring subject. How many people in India are missing reading this literature? Something great will come to them. All that is petty and small will change. A bigger man will come out of the smaller man. Today we are so many petty small men and women. I call it, we are in a big country, but small people. Small people in a big country, full of pettiness, full of violence. All these things are there. Those things will change when they get education in Vivekananda literature. His words are great music. Let me now alone quote Ramarola's remark about Vivekananda literature. Vivekananda's words are great music. They are like Beethoven's symphonies. They are like the stirring rhythms of the march of Handel choruses. I cannot touch these words of Vivekananda separated in books of 30 years distance without getting a thrill to my body as an electric shock. And what shocks and transports must have been produced on the people who actually heard them. This is what a foreigner writes about Vivekananda literature. Our people need to be shocked out of all these pettiness and complacencies today. Here is the literature for that purpose. So tomorrow we shall deal with that part of Vivekananda's drama, that act in India, how he came, how he was received, what message he gave, 
all these things will come as a subject tomorrow. So now, thank you all. Namaskar.